<clears throat> Welcome sales team leaders to Steam Room, Sales Team Leadership Online. This is where we, and I'm going to try and slow down. It's been a busy week and I do have a confession to make. I get a regular infusion and uh, got it again today. Nothing, nothing fatal, but uh, it is something that I have to get each month and it does play a little bit around with the emotions. No, it has nothing to do with the feral beard growth or indeed the feral hair, that's all to do with lockdown. I've, I'm just not game to even attempt to cut my hair in a mirror and um, doing something about the beard. Well, I just left that in as part of the party because I figure it all just looks like part of the act. But we're not long away here. I'm in New South Wales and it appears that um, next month we will be carving it down. So I'm just going to start the show by talking about or going around the traps with all of the training um, channels and training facets that we have and what you can be directing your sales uh, people to do on, on whatever level they're now performing at and get an idea of the, the support that they can get and certainly the training. We're having some extraordinary success now in and around the training at every level and seeing as you typically do, you're seeing some of these sales uh, associates jumping out of the barriers in a fantastic light, then kind of settling down. Now, that, that can have a little bit to do with, you know, the, the, their naivety when they started and the enthusiasm and level of confidence is up. And then it sort of, sort of wanes as they get stuck or get hit with a few of the realities of real estate. That's perfectly normal. But it's also perfectly normal for a leader to re-engage them and be constantly encouraging them and directing them around the things they ought to be doing. So I'll talk to you about what, we, what we've done this week. And I, I can tell you that the big theme for all of the uh, associated um, sales people inside of your sales team, the major theme was creating uh, well, the word that we used in and around property careers was orientation. So when you're out there prospecting, being absolutely certain that the orientation of your prospecting is centric to the motive. I know that I banged about this before, but then talking about how we not only make it centric to motive, but create a direct correlation with conversations that the sales associates should be having with active property sellers and then engaging them, especially with representing your product on every facet, every level, and making sure that they're getting material that I guess fuels the engagement of conversation, opens up the opportunity for them to give advice. So just a reiteration, I know I've done this pretty much a couple of weeks in a row, but just so that you understand, when you're instructing your salespeople around prospecting, you, you say to them, the very first port of call, which they all do anyway, is to try and qualify. So if they were ringing for argument's sake or following up um, the SEL, the sales inquiry log, they're going back to inquiry that's at least four to 12 weeks old. I'm not going to reiterate that. I talked about it last week and the week before. Um, but when, they, when they've qualified that they're a buyer, and indeed a seller, or sometimes both at the same time, to then move to the identification specifically of the motive and to make the conversation centric to that motive. In other words, what you're trying to do, it's done very simply. Where are you coming from? Where are you moving to? Focusing on the where they're moving to, looking for the opportunities around advice. So of course, if an active property seller says, well, we're not going to do anything about ours until we find somewhere to go to then start to talk to them about, you know, the virtues of having your property on the market whilst you're looking of at least knowing the results you've got on your own and how it affects your buying power and a whole range of other things are, are opened up. If you make sure that that orientation is sound. Now the real big change and one that you more might want to entertain here and some things that I noticed talking specifically with some of these some of these um, 
sales associates uh, you know is and a lot of them are actually working or supporting some of them are supporting you guys or are supporting um other team members working effectively as a team so some of our real estate rock stars have sales associates working off them and i just keep saying you know that uh, you, you've got to be careful about think more in terms of where are the sellers rather than where are the buyers and how they how they're functioning now i'm not saying ignore the buyers but you know, one of the big habits that they have out there that's been kind of new, notwithstanding off markets uh, are being a bit of a pain in the backside, if you ask me. But um, in particular, on the back of open for inspections, if you're doing them, or those of you that are doing open, <clears throat> pardon the pun, homes, welcome homes, without actually opening them up to the public, so actually still sending the invitations out, when you get them through, I say, don't have your sales associates follow them up on the same day on the Saturday. Lots of agents are doing that. And I know that you don't want to miss buyers if they're there in offers and all that sort of stuff. But I'm sure that you know which ones they are and you can follow those up. But in terms of prospecting, the sales associates should be calling them on a Monday and or a Tuesday, but preferably the Monday, because then they can use the assumptive close. And if that's consistent with the invitation, and that's consistent with what's happening at the welcome home. And you know Kelly, Kelly, um, Kelly Canara Bat, who who heads up or is the sales team leader at McDowell Real Estate in in Rotorua. We, we were just talking yesterday, and some fabulous things I got to report about what she did around setting standards with the team. And I'm going to have her on here. Like I mean, Kelly's head, heads up a team of over or getting close to thirty odd salespeople, and she pulled nine of them in just this week and said, look, you, you've got to focus on standards. We've got to get the standards to the level that they need to be. So I'm going to talk about that. And um, I, I'm going to um, uh, get her on here. Hi, Kel. I know that you can hear me. I know she's probably freaking out. Oh, I don't want to get on there. You'll be just fine. She made some wonderful leadership moves in the right space. Anyway, back to prospecting. Seriously, don't have them follow up. Let them follow up on the Monday, the Tuesday. They're going to stand more of a chance of jagging and identifying active property sellers. So then we keep, then we swing into action with those. The other thing to do is to focus on um, the material that you're sending to them. Don't hold back. And they've got to start engaging around conversation and around the motive. So one of the first things we're doing, I'm going to get to this in just a second, the property sellers research guide. Now, to me, the moment you've actually identified someone and they get off the phone, this is a document that really ought to be sent out. It does set up the premise for the way in which you want to engage them, the way in which you want to demonstrate that they should be choosing agents based upon their um, professional capacity, especially as it relates to marketing, negotiation and communication. So if they've got that, and this can also create the spark when the uh, sales associate or even you as a sales professional are calling back or one of your salespeople are calling back and engaging with them, it sets up the premise for good debate and good conversation where you can say things like, you know, comparative value is nothing more than a subjective opinion. It's nothing more than a benchmark and it's not what you get. What you're going to get, what you are going to get back in return is basically market value and you can't test market value without taking it to market. And, it's, and it's, a, it's a subject I don't want to uh, debate with you, which leads me to my next point, because then I say what you can then also send them with the right cover letter, you know, in the second week or, or otherwise, why not send the comparative market analysis out? Why not put together a CMA? The sales associates can do this. It needs to be devoid of any opinion that you or your agency or they have made, just giving information. The cover letter needs to be consistent with the property sellers research guide. I'm looking at um, I'm talking that one through, sorry, writing that letter as an example for you to follow. And then you send this out and then they've got information. They've got more fodder to discuss about other sales that have occurred around them. This is also leading to the next point that I'm going to talk about. I'll, from there, you definitely put them on the SMS router. I know that we've already talked about this before. Then the uh, market roundup or some sort of newsletter that's being sent out. You need to be very, very strong on accolades. I'll get to this in a second, but it's one that I'm really pushing hard, especially with those in real estate rockstar. So I'm getting the peak performance professionals. 
I'm saying you know you, you, you tend to forget over a period of time that the power and strength of your recommendations and accolades need to be fed back constantly to sellers. And again, stay away from rate my agent at this stage because it's pre listing stage. And then what we want to do is we want to be sending that um, that information independent of drawing the attention of our competition out there. Two view websites, I've spoken about the virtues of these over and over and over again. These combat the off market phenomena. If you can actually still be communicating with buyers, if you are in lockdown areas where you can't run open for inspections or otherwise, I know that not all of you are having that problem, but you do need to be prepared for it in the event that it does occur. And then of course, especially combating again, those um, uh, combating those off market propositions, your buyers be speaking to and you know, basically emailing and sending some detail on specific buyers you have on hand so that any active property seller knows that you know they should exhaust the opportunities that you've got rather than you getting the bad news where some agents got under your guard and said something about that. And the other thing that we are now focusing on beyond accolades, on top of accolades, accolades is building case studies. So you need to build case studies. I'm eventually hoping to incorporate these into listing pad into your listing presentation, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. And, you know, those case studies need to say, well, look, this is the motive. This is what the people were trying to do. Here's the marketing product that we recommended and they embraced. Here's the result we've got. This is the number of buyers we had. This is how long it was on the market. Because if people can see that sort of evidence, it is all conducive, especially in the listing presentation. But even if it's being sent out beforehand in the prospecting stage, it's all conducive to them even debating with each other saying, look, you know, these people hadn't found a property. They put their property in the market. Look at the result. They got their move and they're happy they're over the moon. I think we should just ring our agent and leave it to them. And again, we're seeing some enormous success, not least of which was with one of our uh, salespeople, Ange Sorales, and, and he's offsider. So he's um, his sales associate is Stuart Hatfield. And Stewie does lots of work with sending out the two view websites as examples to any of the active property sellers on the prospecting list. We're now pushing out the, um, the, 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 the case studies, the accolades are going out and now sending out the CMAs. All of this information constantly happening is what creates the relationship. So the big thing that I'm, but, but in terms of orientation, it's all about creating service, keep it around the motive, not pushing too hard for the listing presentation because a lot of people are quite dubious with all the situation that's going on. And if you are writing something down there as a leader right now, I say this very simply to you, you should be prospecting with the aim to win a listing presentation by invitation rather than solicitation. And that's the major theme that we're pushing through. When we came up uh, into sales trainer at the moment, so again, we've still got this theme in and around the PSRG, the Property Sellers Research Guide, pulling out what we talked about this week was pulling out all of the facets that sit in there and how these ring true inside the listing presentation. So I started some uh, training. Those of you that are in the eastern states of um, Australia, you might want to join into that presentation. You're, uh, you're welcome to do it. The only problem is that it starts at 7 a.m., on a Friday, and I'm pushing that out to the guys in um, uh, in in Rotorua in New Zealand. So I've got all the New Zealand people, and you know Bay of Plenty, some of them up in Auckland. So they're all coming on board, and I've got some of the sales associates in there doing it, and, and some of the sales professionals, I should say, and some of the sales professionals that are now developing their presentation are actually jumping on as guest speakers, as guest presenters on there not least of which is young, who's a rookie, by the way, Sean Donovan, but he's had some, some tremendous success in graduating from the sales associate level, creating great listing presentations, and he's creating great case studies because he's now listing properties without discounting fee whatsoever, selling the marketing product of his choice and not, he, he tell, tells, tells a story the other day where he listed this property and he said, it was just amazing. It worked just the way that you said, I'd already listed it. It was already signed up. They'd already given it to me. 
And then the lady says, by the way, how much money are we asking for this? What, what, what's it worth? So he managed to push price to the end successfully. So he was quite dubious until he saw it in play and saw it working. So we are talking with them, you know, and what we're doing with, uh, and as I said, I've got Andrew and Stu on that. Stuart Donovan's doing a lot of presentations. And every Friday morning, it's going for 13 weeks. You're welcome to jump on board. You, if you do delay, don't panic. We've got the same thing that's going to occur in the Eastern States. And I'll be working that one through and making it available to a lot of the teams that we have. But notably, it'll be done in and around the Hill of Atiri, um, listing presentation. I've got uh, the green light to do that. And I'll be inviting all of our people up and down the East Coast, you know, um, your Ray Whites that we've got, um, your people that we have in Sydney, Nidus, um, all of the guys out on the East Coast, uh, up, here, up there on the uh, Sunshine, the Gold Coast people, uh, Brisbane, Justin, uh, I know that Jack, you're listening here. You're welcome to jump on board and see that listing presentation formulated. And this is all ahead of us introducing listing pad. With the real estate rock stars, the major focus that we've had there is stop presenting, stop presenting and start educating. So we're just basically saying it shouldn't be called a listing presentation in as much as we should be referring to it as a listing education. So we're saying that you've got to, you know, you've got to engage the people to the point where you're leading them through and teaching them something rather than getting frustrated where we've got sellers saying, I'm not prepared to do this or I can't find anything or ours will sell easily. And with these, this, this kind of evokes and there's this sense of frustration, which can then lead in some ways to desperation where we start making lunges to win it or even start talking where we're saying things such as, you know, oh, well, we'll do it for less because the market's so good or you don't have, you can do this off market thing where you can save yourself some money there. This is just nonsense. You've got to have the patience to step back and slowly explain the virtues of marketing when it plays its role, how it leverages value, you know, um, and, and, and all of these things that we do inside a real estate rockstar. And we've said that again, they just have to ring true. So if you're going to put something out like the property sellers research guide, if you're going to make it very clear that on professional capacity, the only areas that we can actually add value are through marketing, are through creating greater perceptions, are through investing in how a property looks, acts and feels, in how you run an open for inspection and how that is conducive to people creating an ambient space that is makes them feel what the property is presented at its optimum level. If you're going to put those things in play, if you're going to talk about creating negotiation parameters and, and what's said at the initial point where someone falls for a property, and then all this ties in with your communication and how you perceive it, well, then you've got to be able to live that. And then when you get to the presentation, you've just got to remain calm to represent value, to explain the virtues of consignment selling effectively. These are the things that we're teaching across each of those three platforms. If you do have salespeople in and around prospecting, I guarantee you, you get them across to us, we can put them into a formulated understanding what they need to say. I'm spending more time than ever with each of these uh, sales associates on rehearsing dialogue over and over again, because what I'm finding, it only takes a week or two of making the calls and they get lazy in some area, they start to cut it down and they're not necessarily recognizing where the punch is inside the dialogue. And even when they do identify, because they get so hungry to, they push a little bit too hard on the presentation or worse, they call it an appraisal. Now, I know that you as a leader are saying, what do you mean you're telling them to slow down? Well, can I tell you, the smartest thing that they can do to win a listing presentation is not be pushing for it. The smartest thing that they can do is offer real service, real advice, make all of their orientation specific to the motive that the client's trying to achieve. That client then feels like the person talking to them gives a shit that they are demonstrating professionalism, that they are demonstrating care, and then the opportunities open up. So as Sean said, he goes, I wasn't even looking for this listing. I just kept talking to this person. Next minute, the person turned around and said to me, well, I've got this property in the same building or just next door can you come on down and take it from me? And he said, 
oh, okay. And he started talking about it. And he said, she just said yes to everything. She agreed to everything. And he said, I'm pretty much certain it was to do with everything that led up to that point, that led up to the point that I was discussing it with them. Still working heavily on uh, property market. A prospect of four is on its way. It will be here. I would say probably in November, we will be ready to officially launch it. But that doesn't mean the prospect of three point, whatever it is, isn't in full swing. It certainly is. I've mentioned some variations that we're doing. Um, if you haven't given a lot of attention to your property sellers research guide, I implore you to either contact me uh, and talk about Number one, how you get it on the front end of your site. Number two, how you then get it into margin edge on social media. Make sure that you've got it in hard copy and it's being used as a qualification at your welcome homes. And as you just heard me, the moment you're identifying active property sellers, it should be going out with a cover letter as it completely overrides, if you ask me, any, any form of pre-listing kit. It doesn't talk about that. It offers bona fide advice it makes admissions and I'll, I'll get to that in a second i might even call it up and have a quick look at it if we've got if time permits to view that's being improved i've already talked to you about case studies and we're going to introduce that there is another referral letter that we're going to be bringing into um the uh the 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 uh the, as, a, as a we have recently sold that comes direct from the seller that you've just sold the property for all of this precedes, so not next week, but the week after. So next week we'll be talking again or running um, our cream, cream stream. But um, the week after next we do steam again. And the topic of, once I've just gotten out for the planning meeting that I'm gonna bring up right now, um, will be what we call state of origin. We wanna get your business into a state of origin. We wanna show you how to wrestle and take control of prospecting. Can I tell you in the future months, weeks and years, if you don't take complete charge as a sales team leader of procuring new and incoming prospects and the continuity of such, you'll probably perish. I think this business is getting tougher and tougher. I think that agents have tried all this crappy ideals. I can tell you now beyond any shadow of a doubt, still the number one draw card for prospective sellers is presence in your marketplace and you need to be the architect of that. But in order to do that, to, in order to fuel it, in order to fund it, 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 there needs to be incentive for the company to do that. And we will be talking about that when we talk about state of origin and how you implement it for the, for the, for the better. And I've got to say this, I know this is a, a bit off track, but even today I was talking to one of our leaders who's in the middle of an acquisition and uh, the, the, the salespeople, there's two salespeople that have run a startup. They've gone for several years. They're struggling now, which uh, that's the norm. Um, and they're, they're ready to sell, but they've still got the sales bug. They're down and out at the moment. They really haven't produced anything what they're capable of, but the track record would mean that they would come back. And the first thing I said to the leader, I said, look, just run your standard presentation to a peak performer. I said, the key is we've got to pull them out of the negativity here at the moment. But when they see, when you run that four stage evaluation, when you ask the right questions around that evaluation, which essentially is, you know, um, what are the things you love doing? You do it for nothing. What are the things you love? What are the things you do under sufferance? And of course, what are the things you should be doing? And he started to show the support that his company is offering and what they can earn and their capacity to earn. This principal, for want of a better term, who's now going to be working on board with him was just completely blown away when they saw the earning opportunity that they had by being fully supported as opposed to going it alone and having all these bloody assistants and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's, it's a complete misnomer and not a lot of leaders are pushing this or understanding the opportunities that they can offer performers. And similarly, there's not a lot of professional real estate agents that place enough value on not having to worry about the constraints of uh, running logistics and all that sort of stuff and, and just having things there. If you can produce ready-made active property sellers, you will have salespeople lining up because then they just get to do the bits that they enjoy thoroughly. 
All right, just wanted to talk about the planning meeting. It's that time. Um, and I just think you need to have a very strong orientation given the space that we're in right now. We're seemingly coming out of lockdown. We're moving into the space that is traditionally the time where a lot of people look about putting their properties on the market. So spring heading into summer, you need to develop some sort of theme. Um, so I would say that you need to run your planning meeting. So what are we today? The 21st, one day this week. Um, I strongly suggest that that planning meeting is an informal meeting. Uh, you do need to run it to an agenda. I have an agenda here. If you want to see the updated or the most current copy of that, please just message me through. Yes, it is a preference that you have been to STEAM in the past, that you are looking to get some coaching at some stage. You know, I'm not a communist. I do do this for money. However, if you're struggling at the moment, you're trying to get the whole thing show on the road and you need to spend a bit of my time, um, I'm more than happy to give you that time to at least point you in the right direction. And if setting you up with a planning meeting, getting understanding uh, is going to help you, I'd be more than happy to do it. So what you do with that planning meeting, you need to have a theme for the month. The theme that I would be suggesting to you this month is orientation in prospecting, if you like platforming and presentations the right way and then at the top end providing a listing education rather than a listing presentation so again you can see it's all about the product that we're the orientation and the way we're looking to bring customers in yes the centric focus is listings here right now you need to have an action list and an action plan so it's like with every meeting you want to come out of that with a specific set of actions then you need to immediately set the goals and targets. I am just absolutely floored on the number of salespeople, forget about leaders, but salespeople that just come in each day and they do not have specific goals as attuned to specific targets. It's very simplistic. And, it's, and, and the last session that we did here was about having the scoreboard and again, I've got to push hard on that one. The number of officers that don't have a clear scoreboard in public view on production numbers just fascinates me. As Vince Lombardi said, if winning isn't everything, why have a scoreboard? Winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. And you, if you don't know where you're headed to, you, you're already there. To be honest with you, like if you're sitting there and you're just going, well, we're not real sure where we're going. Well, it's when people say to me, how many sales do you want to make? They go, lots. Well, what's, what's lots? What does that mean? For goodness sake, get the goals and targets specific. Understanding the goals are mandatory. So they, by their very nature, need to be conservative. They need to be benchmarked against what that person did the year before. If they're new, keep them relatively conservative around what you think can be done. And then focus with that individual on short putts. You hear me say that, those of you that have been to property careers will know that I say that the way to get someone to build their confidence and give them enthusiasm is give them short putts. So often I see people come into this business and the sales team leaders direct them straight to the most complicated part of prospecting or the hard grind part of prospecting or the area that's going to be a lot of work for very little result. To me, I try to make it look as easy as I practically can. I take them straight to the high yield sources where there's quality listings, yeah, that cost very little to, to, to get hold of and are easy to do. And I tell them all the time, prospecting is easy. You look at any presentation I have, I start by saying that. Finding sellers is so friggin' easy, I find it boring. And I know some of you are sitting back and saying, oh, that's easy for you to say in your bloody training role. Well, I'm telling you all, if I was working with you, I'd be out gunning all here on the number of prospects because I would just be on the phone talking constantly to people, offering them good advice with the right set of orientation. In any event, get the goals set and they need to be spent again last year and be very clear on it. Do not start the next month with everyone knowing where they stand. This is exactly what Kelly, which I was alluding to before, has just done with her team 
over there in NZ. And she's just basically said the bottom line, the bottom rung for us, and it's non-negotiable, is a minimum of two listings per month. Now, to me, that's a little bit lower than where I would have liked it. But hey, it's a good place to start. At least everybody is clear on that and you can drag it up. You do not you do not raise the standards of your team from the top. You do it from the bottom. You lift it up from the bottom. You say, we will not go below that. If you fall below this minimum of performance, you are resigning. You will be happier somewhere else. Targets, however, they can be largely aspirational. This is something you can take aim at, but not necessarily hit. So I link the targets to the best month ever. Then you've got to get that exhaustive, listings to get or if you like i call it the active property seller list the a p s list we need to be clear on this and we need to have an understanding of how frequently they're being communicated with you will hear me talk about this the next time we jump on board here when i create that correlation directly to the state of origin how the company starts to wrestle control of its prospects, nurture them through, and instead of your salespeople having to sell them in, we make it easy to buy. That's what we were doing when I was talking with each of in each of the products that we have, training products, and encouraging you to make sure that that passive contact is up. Because the more you can give them, if you send them the P, the property sellers research guide, follow that up by sending them a CMA with no no opinion but good information. Put them on the SMS list that tells them about the sales that you're making. Put, give them the recommendations, give them the case studies, give them the two view. All of that product is then conducive to them seeing that your professional capacity and your capacity as a real estate agency is high. So this then invokes the invitation. They invite you. They're asking you to come and take care of it for you rather than you having to focus on solicitation, which I think once you're in the mode of solicitation, that's invariably going to lead to fee discounting, or that's invariably going to lead to concessions around marketing or this off-market phenomena. But if you are demonstrating clear value, if they can see all the components and it all adds up to a professional capacity that outpaces your competitor, then they will invite you to come run your listing presentation and invite you to take the listing on board. So you move through that, get those listings to get, determine the current status of each property, establish reinforced product marketing mediums, which I just covered off then, and commit to some actions around what you have to do, even if you have to go through them piece individually to figure out so that you as a leader know where you stand on the listings that you're going to get, understand your shortfall. Then you can move to prospector, which is the next item on the agenda. Have a look at the fit up, foothold act activity and what needs to be done to lift the presence in the marketing precinct, whether it be for sale card, fat boys, your PMBX, which has put the message in the box, which is the other agents just listed sign, and you put that just listed around other agents' properties when they list them. Amazing grace for sale by owners to let by owners, other agents' signs or other agents' withdrawals, which you've probably forgotten about, and only because you're thinking there's not many, but they still exist, and you can still get in there and get some action around them. Then, of course, your traction actions. These are when where you've got listings. Are you running? Are you putting sending out your PSRG? your property seller's research guide, is your two views. Are you sending those out so people can see them? And I'm talking about active property sellers. Um, is, your, is your just listed, your LA woman going out, your welcome home invitations? These are ones that get forgotten so bloody quickly. Welcome home invitations are an integral link of actually making the connection with an active property seller. Market roundup, sellergrams, you know, Telegram, Sam's, all of those things, and we have recently sold. Then momentum tasks, and these are all related to accolades. And now we've just talked about case studies and the property sellers research guide in the digital format. That's another one that you should be focused on getting out. I won't talk about the next part, which is basically just your R2Ss. For most of it, that, that's not a really big deal at the moment in terms of planning. The orientation of your planning should be at the, at the inception. You should be putting loads of energy right now into your prospecting, into understanding the orientation of your prospecting, 
into understanding everything that's coming up there and how your company is servicing those active property sellers between identification and getting them to a presentation. Do not put yourself in a point, point where you're either discounted altogether and you never get to the presentation or one of your competitors intercepts that prospect and gets them under your guard by throwing some product at them because their communication is more frequent or of better quality. You need to focus on this as a sales team leader. Take control of this because I can tell you now most competently and confidently that the next time we get together and I start to talk about the state of origin that your property sellers research guide and all the bits and pieces that make up your product will figure in to you making your first moves on creating automation with prospecting, the company seizing control of it and it becoming profitable for the company to do so and you bolstering and improving your productivity moving forward. My name is Mark Dwyer. You can catch me and I openly invite you to do this at any time of your choosing by either emailing me, mark with a K at corporatemanager.com.au, mark at, at corporatemanager, all one word, dot com dot au, or you can telephone me on plus six one four one zero five nine two one six five, and I look forward to catching you week after next at Steam Room. And those of you that are running a real estate business, please be sure to be online next uh, week at this same time for Creamstream. And I look forward to talking to you, talking to you then.